Well, good morning and welcome to the Grace Shepherd's Memo, episode 40. Uh, last time I started a little mini-series for this week that I'm calling Responding to COVID, uh, not with practical things like washing your hands and so forth, but how do you respond spiritually? Last time we talked about our freedom in Christ um, and, and being non-judgmental because there are so many variety of ways to respond to this that we don't want to look down on those who aren't doing things exactly the way we are. And I told you last time that for this second part, we would look at the question, is there a government conspiracy? And I told you that my answer would probably surprise you. So here's my answer to the question, is there a government conspiracy? My answer is yes, of course there is. Why is there a government conspiracy? Well, because the government, especially the higher up you go, the government is made up of people who have two things. They have power, and they have a sin nature. And that's a bad combination. And so because of that, power can be abused. Power can be uh, used to put people down. And we understand that. In around AD 64, there was a massive government conspiracy on the part of Emperor Nero. Um, almost all historians who have studied this agree that the fire of Rome uh, was was started by Nero, some believe, so that he could burn down sections of Rome uh, that he wanted to purchase for his own uses, for his own building projects, and it got out of hand. And so what did Nero do? Well, he blamed the Christians. And that began really a great and tremendous and horrible period of persecution, um, the deaths of many thousands of Christians because of that. And so was that a government conspiracy? Absolutely, it was. But... Here's the deal. Does the Bible say to the New Testament Christian, when you discover a government conspiracy, you should aha and you should say, we're going to fix it. Doesn't say that. Now, Christians can help the government in our particular context because you can run for office and you can vote. You can do all kinds of things legally and morally. But what does the Bible say about our response to the government? Well, Romans 13, in this context of the Roman Empire, which was much more oppressive than the, the wonderful form of government that we enjoy, says, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. And so we're called to obey we're called to submit to the governing authorities. And if you're upset that they're corrupt, uh, what does 1 Timothy 2 tells, tell us to do? 1 Timothy 2, the Apostle Paul is very, very clear about how we're to respond to the government. Yes, even to a corrupt government, uh, if it were. First of all, then, this is 1 Timothy 1, or 1 Timothy 2, verse 1. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. There's how you respond to a supposedly government, uh, a conspiring government, is pray for them and then live a peaceful and godly life. And this is where your belief in the fact that Isaiah 9 says that someday Christ will return and the government will be on his shoulders, that's where your belief now comes into play, where you can sleep at night and you can be peaceful because uh, it doesn't matter what the government is doing. God will make all things right. And it might not be today, and it might not even be this month, but he will. And so we have faith in him. Is there a government conspiracy? Absolutely, because people have power and they have sin natures. But we pray for them, we submit to them, and we are thankful to the Lord for them as we live godly and quiet lives. That is pleasing to the Lord. Lord bless you, and we'll finish up this little series next time.